Good morning, my name is Trinsaf Kvietin, you're watching XTB Weekly Trading Webinar. Today we'll discuss about uh, gold market and the question is, is gold a buy at the level which is being tested right uh, now? So this will be our uh, story of the week. However, traditionally we are going to uh, discuss also other stories including record US stocks and uh, US dollar that is not looking as bad. Uh, but let's start from the top news on Monday morning. So yeah, the FOMC members once again um, combed the markets after the meeting which was perceived uh, initially as slightly hawkish and then we had James Bullard uh, speaking on inflation, on tapering and that rocked the markets uh, in the preceding week a little bit. However, tons of uh, FOMC speakers uh, with uh, Chairman Powell among them uh, yeah they were just saying look we are not going to do anything soon so um, that uh, you know, left little choice for indices and um, also with the news on the infrastructure deal which is far from being implemented but but the news itself uh, was enough to propel US indices to fresh all-time highs. Meanwhile, US dollar maintains most of the post-FOMC gains and the major breakthrough uh, took place on the cable last week after the B Bank of England decision, which was fairly uh, fairly dovish as some at least some change in the nar narrative was expected, similar to what the Fed did. However, there was none and therefore uh, the pound uh, weakened uh, following the um, the Bank of England decision. We have new lockdowns in Australia. Uh, we have Delta variant in uh, Europe, especially in UK. So there, uh, right now there is no market reaction to this. However, uh, investors should be on alert as you know if if it gets worse. And you know the the, wor the worst case scenario is that you know despite the, all the vaccinations, uh, we cannot return to the full. Um, full normal life uh, in, a, in a foreseeable period of time. So that will be certainly the biggest blow. Um, like I said, markets not reacting to this much right now. However, yeah, you should be on alert. Um, and finally, US strikes Iran back to military in Iraq and Syria, which sent oil prices to new highs. As we can see on this, uh, on this chart for Brent, we had new post-pandemic highs today in the morning. Right now, some profit taking after this move. However, as you can see, this trend is very, very pervasive, and yeah, it doesn't look like um, it sh it could reverse anytime uh, soon. So, just to just final two words on this chart. If you look at the uh, at the level of stimulus uh, that's that's being implemented in the U.S. economy last year and this year, it's absolutely tremendous more than 10 percent gdp each year so obviously this makes the economy grow very very quickly um but the question is how it's going to look in the long term because obviously this means more debt and you know there will be a pay payback period um in the future and unless the economy uh starts growing faster on itself and you know, to be able to um continue without this stimulus then obviously in my in my not look as bright as it looks today all right so uh let's start from from um previous week and indices in the us dollar so we had a pmi flash pmi data uh which was i would say fairly neutral uh, i think the biggest thing from from these pmis is that regardless of the market whether it's japan uh, which was weaker or it's germany which was stronger um, the the message is the same. So the companies ha are struggling to um, with supplies, with new workers, uh, with price pressures. So that means that there is a risk that this um, economy could start slowing soon, and that would be definitely negative. So like something like we had in 2018, where it looked at one point where you know it could be a long lasting. A recovery or long-lasting uh, booming economy because it wasn't you know it was late in the cycle but 
it could down quite quickly. So definitely PMIs are worth watching uh, in, the in the next months and a slowdown scenario with price pressures would be certainly not welcomed by the market. So far, however, there is a little impact as there is a absolutely um, ocean of, of money uh, looking to for, for, for the slightest yield. Uh, you can see that uh, precisely with the F Federal Reserve reverse repo operations, which we discussed on a couple of occasions. And as you know, as, uh, as I was explaining last week, um, the Fed increased or, or actually they implemented some kind of r rate to this r reverse repo operations because initially it was zero and now it's five basis points. That's still pretty much nothing. It's 100% less than inflation, uh, 100 times, not 100%, 100 times less than inflation. But as you can see, it's enough to attract more billions of dollars. So it's incredible. That means just that there's so much money on the market that doesn't know where to go. So obviously with that in mind and with the Fed being as cynical as they are, you know, when you ha when you see the US PMI, which you, which you have here, um, where they where companies report difficulty finding stuff, highlighted uh, wage pressure, and the Fed at the same time saying we need to help the job market, obviously the the impact cannot be different. The the market participants perceive this as a clear message that the Fed wants to inflate asset prices, and this happens. So you know un uh, until we hit some bump in this road, it's really hard to uh, expect um, some uh, some reversal here. So uh, so result is obvious. Uh, last week I said that this FOMC meeting was dollar positive because of this slight increase in technical rates, reverse repo and uh, interest in bank reserves, but I doubt that th the impact on the indices would last because of this flood of money. And as you can see, markets reversed very, very, very quickly. And we are already on the new all-time highs with S&P 500 without a clear message from a technical point of view, be because we are in the middle of this uh, yawning wedge where, where you can, you know, a reversal in this formation can happen at any point, um, as you saw before the pandemic crisis. So, so there was no warning there, and, and you know, it might be again, I know it, it's not what you perhaps want to hear, but, but it is what it is. And it's the same story for, uh, uh, for the NASDAQ, which, you know, we, we had very clear signal, which we discussed a few weeks ago, a second double bottom on the support line. And we, you know, we discussed this when it was still very low. Um, uh, and now we are in the middle of this industry, maybe slightly upper part of it, but very far from the resistance point. So, so as overheated as these markets are, as, um, as especially uh, fundamentally um, extreme as they are, because <laughs> because it's insane looking at some measures. Here you can you can see S and P five hundred to GDP, US GDP, which is so much higher than it was at the top of of the dot-com bubble and you have here you have um deviations of this measure from averages here it's 10-year average here's two-year average so whatever whichever measure you you take you are at least two, two standard deviations from the, from mean which means that markets are extremely overvalued and um and and very expensive but looking at the present um, fundamentals with this over liquidity where the money simply doesn't have anywhere to go it happens what happens and as you can see these strong fundamentally strong companies are outperforming these are the companies which I presented to you uh, two weeks ago uh, selected by our uh, big data model as you can see already there are, there are not only you know the market itself is doing well because it's positive in June after you know, being positive in in many months before that that's S and P five hundred, the the orange one, but the strongest companies are doing even better, and yeah, at least for now. Um, so one notice here is that other than the Fed, other than um, uh, the yields not rising, 
it's also Democrats uh, not really doing any harm to the tech companies. Because when Biden won uh, in the US, there was a talk that you know they could um, be harsher on these big corpo, uh, increasing some minimum taxes, doing more regulations and things like this. And at least for now, it doesn't look like this is going to be the rea reality. So, so obviously this helps these stocks. All right, let's move on to the story of the week. So let's start from the chart to have a good background on why this is important. Because as you can see, uh, once um, uh, as indices manage to recover, more than recover the post FOMC slide, with gold, it's completely different. We had a big dive over here to uh, precisely to this support of 1765, which we discussed last week. And pretty much nothing happened. This uh, support, mm, you know, they managed to defend it, but not nothing more than this. So we, we are sitting at the support and the question is what's going to happen next. So, so this is a good opportunity to look um, at the you know, broader fundamentals of the gold market. So let's do it. So fundamentally, as you can see from the, from the demand perspective, previous three quarters were pretty, pretty tough. As you can see, as price was rising towards the summer of last year, uh, fundamentals were deteriorating. And uh, the streak of, uh, of low demand was the worst in more than a decade. The reason was outflows from ETFs. The ETFs uh, were a reason why gold managed uh, so well 10 years ago when they were first popularized. People um, discovered that there is a new way to invest, especially in Europe, in the, in the US, because in Asia they mostly invest in physical gold. But ETFs were very popular, uh, became very popular in Europe and, and the US. But over the past few months, there were significant out outflows, especially these two periods uh, towards the end of 2020 and um, March, early April this year. This coincided with inflows to cryptocurrencies, um, but also it coincided with rising bond yields in the US. So, um, but then looking at the other uh, variables, we can see that the, the long-term fundamentals for gold do not look as weak. Here you can see jewelry demand um, from, from the major uh, destinations. As you can see, while it's a little bit hesitant in, uh, in India and the, in the you know, Western uh, countries, in China already demand is highest in more than six years. So China is becoming a very important market for gold. And it looks like um, the, the general demand will be okay uh, going going um, mm, going into the future. Meanwhile, um, as you can see here, uh, the problem for gold during the last decade was that this price rally attract uh, some new mining capacity, and output of gold started to increase in the second part of previous decade just as demand started to level off but now that's not going to be the case the as you can see output is already flat and the outlook is not not that rosy actually there are expectations as you can see here that over time uh, we can we can uh, observe some kind of peak gold where where there will be less mining going forward because it's getting more expensive so so these hard fundamentals seem to be positive. Um, looking at the technicals, other than the charts, uh, I would say gold is fairly neutral. Obviously, from the long-term perspective, gold is still very expensive. However, looking at deviations from the 200-day average, we are nearly at the uh, at this uh, average. So, so I would say. This is neutral, and also this relationship with bond yields, which is very strong, is now in balance. So no, you know, no strong signals from that point. However, if you look at the relationship with with stocks, you can see that gold is already at the lowest point in nearly t 20 years. Of course, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be any lower. As you can see, in, in the at the peak of the dot com bubble, it was the the relationship was even lower, be mostly because. Uh, gold was uh, very cheap in nominal terms by then, and that's not the case right now. Uh, 
it also doesn't mean that we will go here in, in a few years time we don't know that what it means is the gold is attractive uh, diversifier for portfolio investors so 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 if you are portfolio investor if you invest in stocks ETFs cryptos it means that right now is not not a bad time to diversify into uh, into gold because yeah there are in relative terms even if it's not cheap in nominal terms in relative terms to other assets which are much more expensive um, it looks solid so to sum up uh, Post FOMC sell-off, um, yeah, took gold prices to to interesting area. I would say short-term speculative um, outlook is interesting for gold. We don't know uh, if if this support holds, but we have very clear defense area. If it blows down here, it's obvious that there is no point sticking to a speculative trade for a rebound. So so we we really have a strong uh strong support to you know to, to to be sure where where when to exit if we want to trade it and we have potentially a uh, large upset so i would say speculatively it makes sense um mid-term i would say there are biggest risks because there is still a risk that the fed will be behind the curve uh, if inflation doesn't slow down as they hope uh, also uh, the gold prices declined mostly due to a rebound in the dollar and this rebound in the dollar looks as it's here to stay if you look on the euro dollar you can see that the most of the dollar strengthening is still there and the attempts to reverse it failed and if you look at some other currency pairs like especially i mentioned um the cable which is GB, GDP, uh, GBP uh, USD. Here we have a, a break of a long-term trend line, which was additionally tested as a, as a resistance. So there could be a trend, potential trend reversal here. And also Aussie to the US dollar, where you have a potential big head and shoulders. That may uh, be you know, negative for for these currencies and positive for US dollar and therefore it's a risk for gold prices in the medium term. So medium, medium term I would say this outlook is the most risky. In the long term again uh, gold is cheap in the relative terms to stocks so it's a good diversifier. Oh, okay and finally a week ahead and that's down to NFP. This is the m by far the most important report that we're going to have um, and yes obviously here again you can see uh, the two stories from the same data uh, on the left is what the Fed sees which is the pure uh, number of employees on the right hand side you can see labor fund which is employees times the hours worked times the wages so as you can see here it's very very different so so obviously the markets they are uh, aware of this and they know that in order to push the Fed in the short term you need to have more of this but this is also important because if wages grow more than expected then as I said we, uh, when we discussed the gold market the Fed might find themselves behind the curve and they need to tighten aggressively at some point even if they don't want because then inflation might not uh, cool down as they hope it will so yeah, so obviously the markets will react the most to the employment change which is expected at around half a million but wages are also important to watch the data is on friday 1 30 pm uh, also of notice is adp report that's also always released in advance and it's going to be wednesday uh, however bear in mind that uh, very often it's uh, not very accurate predictor of, of what happens on friday so so it's still worth watching still possibly some market reaction however uh, it doesn't mean that uh, what it says is going to be exactly replicated on friday okay so ladies and gentlemen thank you for your attention um please stay with us with the news section and i see you next time have a good week